When you pick up a book, you're embracing someone else's dream, and you are now complicit in that dream. This is an effort to make sense of the dark and endless universe, which seemingly spirals out of control around us, vast, menacing, and whose purpose is unknown. We strive to understand that purpose. We long for understanding and a solution to all of that which plagues our dreaming lives. We seek to understand the fires of passion, the commonality of greed and lust, and we seek to silence the murdering beast that dwells in humankind's wicked heart. We seek to cross the barriers of time and find our hearts made of gold, our emotions alight with silver trappings. We seek to push back against the darkness and cross those mysterious barriers that separate us from yesterday's reality and tomorrow's dream. The artist puts a resemblance of his own soul on the paper or on the canvas. It no longer belongs to them as it finds a path across the myriad time streams to flutter at our fingertips like some bright and magical butterfly that fills our minutes with the dazzling landscape of ideas. We hold it close, gently. We return to it when we need comforting or when we need inspiration. We fill our rooms with these colorful butterflies and each one tells us a different story that resonates with our souls, just as they resonated with their creator, that artist, so long ago. These books we collect are like those butterflies, and they speak to us from the bookshelves in the dusty corners of our rooms. They add quality to our lives. They are living, breathing things that our minds and hearts have embraced, and we won't let them go. Fill your rooms, my friends, with the stories these books offer. Sing the praises of the colorful allegorical butterfly which some writer imagined, and don't look back. The path is long, but the rewards are many. Indulge yourself. Reach for the moon glow among the trees or the purple shadows of a western mountain landscape. Sail across dark seas and conquer the dragons. Scale a castle's walls and find the princess you have longed for. Seek the night from a thousand battles and read to him your poem. These adventures and more are but a step away. Turn the page. Hi everybody, welcome back to McNulty's Overcrowded Book Corral. Uh, we still have that construction going on here, hence you see boxes piled up and all sorts of things. Hopefully that new den will be done by the end of the year or early next year. In the meantime, today's topic is Aramont paperbacks. In 1962, Aramont began reprinting classics of literature. A lot of it was Victorian era literature, great material. They also had a line of science fiction and they had some westerns. Um, very, very few of those. I think they might have even had some romance novels thrown in there. But starting in 1962, they really focused on the classics. And by my count, they published 207 classics of literature. That was very, very heavy, a very heavy line of Victorian era works. I'm going to show you some of those um, and talk about some of the key books for me uh, as a young reader uh, and some of the key books that I have as a collector. Um, Aramont was an imprint of Thomas Bourget uh, along with Avalon Books all of which was purchased by Amazon in 2012. Uh, I don't know if Amazon will ever reprint the uh, Aramont Classics with uh, the original cover artwork, but uh, we can always hope. Some of the original cover artwork is quite stunning, and I'm going to show you some examples of that. Um, 207 um, Aramont Classics. So let's take a look. The very first one was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And this began a, a long run of magical 
uh, very magical um, classic reprints. Um, so how do you identify these? The Airmont logo on this first one is right here. Um, it was a bird, and then on the cover they would have the letter CL, and then the number. So this is CL number one, which is also reprinted on the spine. I'm going to have a little uh, image of that for you right about here. So Pride and Prejudice was the first one, and then they took off with it. Um, here's the thing about the uh, the uh, Airmont paperbacks. You know, 1962, this is the era of the great spinner racks. Spinner racks were everywhere. They were in every type of retail store you can imagine, a pharmacy, a sh even shoe stores. You know, they were everywhere. Some stores would have three or four spinner racks. They would have paperbacks. They would have comic books. And it was a really a profitable thing for the distributors, for the publishers, and for the business owners because it was always a type of thing where you would grab a book and say, oh, I'll take that. So early on, the Airmont paperback sold for about 50 cents. And then throughout the 70s, then the prices went up 60, 75, a buck 25, whatever it is. They were still low cost reprints with pretty good covers. Here's the Wuthering Heights edition. I think this is probably the most read edition of Wuthering Heights that you'll ever find anywhere because it was everywhere. They made a, a, a mint off of these books, um, especially the Victorian era. Um, and here's here's my Wuthering Heights, you know, great stuff. So, Airmont was largely responsible during the 60s and 70s with introducing the American public at large to the classics of literature. Um, in the 60s, for example, I think these two Jack London books are probably quite familiar to many of you. These are probably the first editions that you read. They were the first editions that I read of Call of the Wild and White Fang. Um, great cover artwork on these. And by the way, at the end of this, I'm going to have some scans. Just fantastic stuff. And you know, and it introduced us to um, it introduced us to the the great world of um, of classic literature. Silas Marner. This is actually one of my favorite Victorian era books. Um, George Eliot, who was actually a woman, uh, using a pen name um, to get away from that stigma against women writing, and Silas Marner's a great book, you know, and it was it was Airmont all the way, Heidi, a classic, you know. Here's one of my favorites, Howard Pyle. Now, I've talked about Howard Pyle in my previous episode about Robin Hood. I don't know why there's not a Howard Pyle renaissance going on right now because Howard Pyle not only wrote the books he illustrated them Airmont did not really reproduce uh, his illustrations uh, heavily but um, they reprinted the text Howard Pyle Howard Pyle was really a fun adventure writer this is how we get introduced to the three musketeers and other great books some of which are almost forgotten today uh, Joan uh, John Bennett's master Skylark great little book and then Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates by Mary Mapes Dodge. I mean what a great book this is. So it's fun material and a whole generation was introduced to this. This is how I ended up with Mark Twain. You know, Tom Sawyer and then this is a classic Airmont. Airmont reprinted Tom Sawyer Abroad and Tom Sawyer Detective in one volume. Slender volume though it may be um Really great cover art. There will be a scan of all this. And then, of course, Huckleberry Finn. So we're introduced to this great material thanks to Airmont. Um, I just loved them. Um, so out of the 207 that were published, I think I have roughly 60 of them. And for some of the other titles, I may not um, have the Airmont, but I probably have a different publisher. Some of these books were published, you know, obviously from other paperback publishers they didn't hold the market to themselves it was public domain material um but some of these books are highly sought after here's the billy bud with the cover he looks like sterling hayden you know now this edition of mysterious island is becoming really hard to find for you jules verne fans out there this is the airmont mysterious island edition great great moody cover artwork on here try and find that uh in really good condition not easy to do of course i also think that 
Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz. These are probably the the first books that were uh, read by a generation that was involving themselves in those authors. And that was our introduction to these classics, Edgar Allan Poe. And, you know, Aramont did such a great job. I really love Aramont, what they did. They also reprinted George MacDonald's, you know, now forgotten, now forgotten author. George MacDonald at the back of the North Wind and The Princess and the Goblin. Classic fantasy from George MacDonald. Um, fun material there. And, you know, so Aramont is worth your time if you're going to collect vintage paperbacks, get the Aramonts. So now I want to talk about a couple of the books that have... They're not only great works of literature, as they all are with Aramont, but you also have some fantastic vintage cover artwork. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I'm going to have a scan of that in there. And, you know, yes, I own three copies of it. Um, that's what collectors do. Uh, I would seek that out. If I was in a, a secondhand bookstore today... And if I saw one of these in reasonable condition at a good price, I would buy it automatically. Um, because this is the first book that I read by Stevenson. This is the book right here that I read. This is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with the incredible, incredible artwork. The same goes for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which I think has the greatest, moodiest cover of any edition of Frankenstein ever done. Beautifully done by Aramont, and we're going to talk about the cover artist in a minute. The best of the horror novels, um, the best cover artwork was Bram Stoker's Dracula. Take a look at this. Um, I have three of these, and you know this. These are easily found on eBay, but you're not going to find them in really mint condition. Or if you do buy it, um, this is the best. This is the best cover artwork for Dracula that I've ever seen. I think it's so great. Loosely, clearly inspired by Christopher Lee in the Hammer Horror film, but with some subtle differences. Looking closely, you can see the fangs are longer, and he has a little bit of a kind of a grayish um, mustache there, and then, of course, the gray hair on the sides. Really a moody, great piece of artwork for Aramont's Bram Stoker Dracula. This is probably one of the most sought after horror editions, um, I think worldwide that you'll ever find in a vintage paperback, simply because people love the cover. Now who did the cover? I think an artist named Elaine Duillo, D-U-I-L-L-O, I believe that's how it's pronounced, Duillo, I'm not sure. Um, she worked with Aramont on some of these and this resembles her style. I don't have verification on that. Speculation. Other artists that worked for Aramont would be Lynn Ward, Nino Carb, Roy G. Krenkel, these names are familiar with vintage paperback collectors, and Ed Emschwiller, who did some of the science fiction covers for them. Um, so as you can see, the artwork on these is just spectacular what a great edition of dracula i would love to see this reprinted by amazon with that cover in a trade paperback edition um that would be just fantastic another great one Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea yes i have three copies of it uh it's not unusual for me to uh seek out um better editions on the books that i love the artwork on this is Clearly inspired by the Walt Disney mid-1950s or early 1950s uh, film starring Kirk Douglas and James Mason. Clearly they took the uh, the Nautilus, uh, the image of the Nautilus from the film and they uh, kind of rendered it in their own way with some subtle differences. And this also remains a highly sought after edition of the Jules Verne. The Jules Verne Aramonts are... Um, uh, pretty well known hg wells i mean you're going to see scans of of a lot of this at the end of this um other books that had an uh, important effect on me when i read them the return of the native by thomas hardy uh, one of the great works of victorian literature i waded through this as a young man and appreciated it much more when i was much older 
we won't say how much older. Uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, poems, Evangeline, and so forth. And then we have the Russians. All right, we'll end it with the Russians. How about the Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky? All right, here's a big fat Aramont for you. Uh, you know, I really, I really believe, I can't prove this, I really believe that Aramont really is one of those publishers that went far in promoting Russian literature and introducing Russian lit to the American public in the 1960s. Um, and then we have Fathers and Son by Ivan Turgenev and uh, so forth and so on. Um, Russian literature, that's a topic unto itself. You know, a lot of these authors, this falls into, um, they could have topics on their own, perhaps. I'll get to them. Mark Twain, Herman Melville. I did cover Moby Dick in a different episode. But, um, you know, just an incredibly fun material with covers like this. You know, I mean, that's hard to beat. And the writing, of course, this is classic stuff. This is fun. This is great literature. Um, you know, a lot of Victorian era stuff is in here and much, much more. Uh, as you can see from some of the cover scans that I'm about to show you. So for you collectors out there. For you book collectors out there, you're interested in some really fun material. Take a look at this. Um, if you're interested in starting an Airmont collection, why not look for Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with its incredibly moody and gothic-looking, stunning cover artwork. This my friends is what book collecting is all about this is what reading is all about this is an education unto itself and i am certainly privileged and happy that i've been doing it for as long as i have i hope you'll join me on that journey and let me know in the comments what airmont classics you remember reading or what you may have collected and until then stay well stay happy feed your brain read some books